comparative culture was being sort of weakened. And uh, one of the ways in which it was being weakened was that uh, the, the powers that be, whoever, they thought that maybe having everybody together was not good. And so when we would be denied an FTE to replace someone who had retired or so forth, they would give half of an FTE to some department, uh, Spanish or history, to have somebody over there be hired presumably to do something in Latino studies. Same thing with black studies and so forth. Um, but uh, they began to create these programs. These programs were not, they were not a ma they were, did not have a major, they did not have a, a BA or anything, just a program in Chicano studies, a program in black studies, a program in women's studies. But this sort of like, uh, at least compared to the culture had degrees. So as we got weakened and finally the degree disappeared, what the campus had was a number of programs that really didn't amount to anything. They amount to having a name on the catalog, okay? Uh, and the people that were in those programs usually were either a professor of Spanish or a professor of history, but they really had no commitment in terms of research. Um, it was like about teaching a few courses here and there, like maybe like to calm the, the natives or something, right? But again, that, that didn't work. Um, um, and so people within each one of those um, pro program, the little programs, began to really ask for, hey, look, we have to have something more than this. We have to have something more than this. And that's what happened with the small program in uh, Chicano Studies, which in fact, I think you were the first, the first director of, Gil. Uh, we began asking for, you know, FTE, for, you know, lines. We began to say we have to expand the curriculum. Eventually, the program became, after a long, long, long fight, it became a department. And after a long, long, long fight, it became a major. We're still on that struggle. Um, in other words, I guess what I'm saying is that the creation of the programs was to sort of get rid of comparative culture and create some kind of thing, some kind of a showcase that we're doing something. But it got out of their hands because of our struggle, the struggle of many people here, and it became so. But I'm saying that we're still having the struggle, and I'll give you a very concrete example of that. UC San Diego has a PhD program in ethnic studies. UC Riverside has a PhD program in ethnic studies. I'm talking about graduate students, because presumably the role of a world-class university like UC is to produce research professors, right? So UC San Diego has one. UC Riverside has one, UCLA has a PhD actually in Chicano studies, UC Santa Barbara has a PhD in Chicano studies. You get the picture? We are surrounded by UC campuses that have a PhD, a graduate research, a research program on Chicano studies or ethnic studies, two, two and two, except UC Irvine. Mm -hmm. And some of us are still fighting to um, get that. Now what the administration, the, what they would really like us to do is the following. Why don't you first create a master's program, you know, and then charge a lot for it. <laughs> and what we're saying is no, 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 no. These master's programs that are being created across the UC campuses are master's programs that are being added to already existing PhD programs. Yeah, to charge money and raise money that way. We don't want to go that way. We don't want to be, have only a BA and then an MA. Uh, that, that becomes a matter of you know, just raising money for the university. We would like to be like the rest of the UC campuses. Let me continue with the Northern Campus because UC Berkeley has you know, a program, you know, PhD program in ethnic studies. There is a Latin American Latino program, PhD, at UC Santa. I mean, I think every campus has that. Merced doesn't have it, they're, they're very small. So at Irvine, it is a battle that still has to be fought. 